the area measured in square units under the curve of f of x equals 3x squared minus 12 between x equals negative 3 and x equals 0 is given by one of the following. And whenever we're asked questions about the area under a curve, it's always useful to sketch a graph of the situation that we're dealing with. So f of x, which is equal to 3x squared minus 12, is going to be a parabola. And it's been dilated and translated. So this negative 12 translates at 12 units in the negative y direction. So that means that our graph might look something like this. And this point down here would of course be 0, negative 12. And hopefully you'll agree with me that this x-intercept is minus 2, comma 0 and that this x-intercept is at positive 2, comma 0. So that's the graph of y equals f of x. And next we're going to consider the area between x is negative 3 and x equals 0. So we can see that between negative 3 and 0 there's an x-intercept where the graph goes from being above the x-axis to below the x-axis. So starting off, is this is the point x equals negative 3. We have an area here that's under the curve and bounded between the curve and the x-axis. And then we're going to have a similar second region that's bounded under the curve, or at least between the curve and the x-axis, between negative 2 and x equals 0. So there's two regions there that we're going to need to consider. And now let's just use our CAS calculators for a moment to explore what those regions might be. On the CAS calculator, go into the main menu. Next, what we're going to do for this question is we're going to define the function f of x. So writing in its rule, we had 3x to the power of 2 minus 12, and we can highlight that and go interactive define as f of x, and we can hit OK. Next, what we want to do is we want to explore the areas of those regions that we highlighted on our graph. So integrals, and in particular definite integrals, have something to do with the area under a curve. So if I bring up the keyboard and we go to Math 2, we can find the integral symbol. And the first region we're just going to have a quick look at is from negative 3 to negative 2 for the function f of x. I'm just going to drag that down, dx. And we find that when we execute that, we get a value of positive 7. Next, if we look at a different region and we go from negative 2 to 0, we find that it has a integral or a definite integral integral that has a value of negative 16. And one more integral that I'm just going to calculate right now before we move back to our question is if we went from negative 3 to 0 all up, which gives a value of negative 9. So we can see those three values of the definite integrals there and we're now going to explore what they mean back on our graph. So from the calculator we found out that the signed area of this region that we've shaded in blue is equal to positive 7. And then we also found out that the signed area of the second region, which was between negative 2 and 0, which is all below the x-axis, is equal to negative 16. And now when we're referring to these signed areas, the area will have a positive sign in the case of this positive 7 if it's above the x-axis, and it will have a negative signed area in the case of this negative 16 if the region is below the x-axis. And if we just calculated the integral between negative 3 and 0 in one go, we'd have 7 plus negative 16 would give negative 9 overall. But none of those regions actually represent the area under the curve. To get the area under the curve, we want to take the 7 and we actually want to add 16 rather than subtracting 16 away. So we find that the area under this curve, the sum of those two shaded regions, so really what we wanted to do if we wanted to find the area for a problem like this, is we want to take the positive areas, positive signed areas, those above the x-axis, so from negative 3 to negative 2, and then we want to subtract away the negatively signed areas, which are the integrals like negative 2 to 0 of f of x dx, and when I subtract a negative value, it will actually add it on. So hitting execute gives that value as being positive 23. And that actually represents the area under that curve between negative 3 and 0. And what we'll do on the next slide is we'll actually calculate that by hand so that you can see how that would be done. 
So in this slide, I've kept a computer generated sketch of the two regions that we're dealing with, one in blue that's above the x-axis and one in red that's below the x-axis. And we can now say that the area in total of these two regions is going to be equal to, and we're going to take the integral from negative three to negative two. So this is for the blue region of the function f of x dx. And then we're going to add on to this the second area. But in order to make it positive, we either have to put a negative sign at the front of the integral or we need to swap the terminals. So for this video, we're going to show what happens when we swap the terminals. So instead of going from negative two to zero, the most negative or smallest value to the most positive or largest value, we're actually going to go from zero to negative two. We're gonna swap those terminals, which will make this value positive when we get to it down the track. And of course, we're going to have f of x and we can't forget the dx there. So next up, we know that the area is then going to equal the antiderivative and for that, we're going to look back up at our rule of f of x, which is 3x squared minus 12 and anti-differentiate that. So we're going to have 3x and we add one to the power to get 3x cubed and then dividing by three cancels out those threes. So we're just left with x cubed. And then for the minus 12, which was a constant, we just introduced the variable x and we're going to calculate that anti-derivative between the terminals of negative three and negative two. And then we're going to add on to that the same antiderivative because we're dealing with the same function. So we'll still have x cubed minus 12 x inside those square brackets between the terminals of zero and negative two. And a reminder that we swap those terminals so that we would get a positive value for that integral. So this is going to equal. And for the blue region, we're going to have, and we're gonna have a few brackets appearing here. We're going to have the upper terminal substituted in, which is negative two cubed minus 12 times negative two. And then we're going to subtract away from that the lower terminal substituted in, which is the minus three. So we're going to have minus three cubed minus 12 times negative three. And then we're going to add on to that. And for the region in red, we're going to have, first of all, substitute in the upper terminal of negative two. So we're going to have minus two cubed minus 12 times negative two. And then we're going to subtract away from that the antiderivative with zero substituted in. But hopefully you can see zero cubed minus 12 times zero is simply zero. So that is our antiderivative evaluated between zero and negative two. And now the aim of the game is simply to simplify that. So we might take a couple of steps to do that just so we don't get anything wrong. So minus two cubed gives minus eight. And then we're going to have plus 24 when we have minus 12 times minus two. And then we subtract away from that and keeping brackets in this one is important. So we have minus three cubed gives minus 27. And then we have plus 36 when we have negative 12 times negative three. And then we add on to that. And in the red, that's actually going to come out the same as the minus eight plus 24 because we've substituted negative two in again, so minus two cubed is minus eight. And then minus 12 times minus two is the plus 24 that we were saying was going to re be repeated again. So this is going to equal. And then in the blue, if we do all of that at once, we have minus eight plus 24 gives 16. And then we're going to subtract, that's just nine away from it. So that gives seven. And then we add on to that minus eight plus 24, which just gives positive 16. And then adding those two things together, the seven plus 16, that gives 23. And because it's area, it's going to have a area in units squared. We could write that down if we wanted. And that's why we found E was the correct answer on the previous slide. And just to make particular note of that, the seven here represents the area of this region is seven. And the 16 that's added on, which became positive because we swapped the terminals, Otherwise, from the calculator, we saw it was previously negative 16. That is the area of this region. And adding the two areas of those regions gives the 23 units squared. So that is the answer to this question.